All right, welcome to another week of yoga. Last week we did yoga um, for people with no hands because <laughs> I hurt my hand. And this week we're doing COVID yoga because I got the COVID. So uh, this is gonna be the most I've moved in like four days. I'm feeling pretty good in general. Um, but yeah, I know where the no idea where this will take us today because this will absolutely be the most movement I've done in quite a few days. So let's see where we head <laughs> today. <coughs> um, let's just work on breathing. Seems like a good place to start. So sitting up nice and tall. Taking a couple of deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Maybe today's theme, COVID yoga, needs to revolve around the rib cage and the diaphragm and creating more space to breathe and to be. Mm. And softening into softening into our authentic selves a little bit more. So that's something that's been coming up through this whole process. Through this kind of unknowing space where so many things are suddenly upended. How can we just be with ourselves and be in the moment and be in our bodies and just be? We spend so much time ahead of ourselves, behind ourselves. How can we learn to rest a little bit more in the present moment and just breathe? Mm. Mm, okay, so if you're sitting on something and it's comfortable to come off of it, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, stay up on top of it. Uh, you want to make sure that your sitting bones are able to stay rooted through this. And we're just going to go back to the stretch that I used to start class with years ago. I love this. I don't know why I don't do it anymore. So sitting crisscross, which... Fun fact of the day, owls sit like this. Owls hoo hoo sit like this because they got crazy long legs that we don't know about because we don't see it because they got big fluffy, everything flows around them. So sitting crisscross, sit up as tall as you can, we're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up, really stretch through your side bodies, but feel the, the midline of the body reach down. So we root down through our midline and we stretch up through our external aspects. And then you're gonna take that up and over. And as you do this, the hands come to the floor and you kind of wiggle your butt back. Really sit into your sitting bones. Walk those fingers as far forward as they can go. Stay up on your fingertips. Pull your shoulders away from your ears and then let the head fall. Breathing into all your nooks and crannies, those spaces along the spine that are feeling tight, restricted. Mm. 
And then you're gonna stay nice and long and just walk yourself over to the left. Keep that right hip really rooting down and reach through the right arm. Think about rotating your right ribcage down towards the mat. So allowing all those little intercostals, those muscles between the ribs to expand with the stretch and expand with the breath. You're gonna stay long and walk yourself back through center all the way over to the right. And you sink back into your left hip and extend through the left arm. Rotate that left rib gauge down towards the mat. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. And let the head soften down. And come back center, lengthen yourself out again, pull the shoulders away from the ears, sink into your sitting bones, drop the head. And then walk yourself back up. Whew. And just luxuriate for a second in that space that we just created through the hips, all the way through the waistline and the side bodies. And then we're gonna swap legs. So whatever legs in front is gonna go in back. And once again, sit up nice and tall. We're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up. So we expand through the outer edges and we press down through our midline. Take another inhale, get longer, get bigger, and then fold it forwards. Come up on the fingertips, walk it forwards. As you walk it forward, you pull the shoulders down and you press back through your sitting bones. And then letting the head go.
walking yourselves over to the right. And as you do so, sink back into your left sitting bones and lengthen through the left fingertips. Keep the shoulders pulling away from the ears. And that left rib cage keeps working its way down towards the mat. Walking yourself through center. And all the way over to the left. And as you do so, you sink into the right sitting bones, lengthen through the right waistline, shoulder, arm. Rotate that right rib cage down towards the mat. The shoulders away from the ears and let the head melt down. Walk back through center. Lengthen out, sink back. Roll yourself up. Whew. I don't know. That took us what? 10 minutes to do both sides, both legs, both sides. And that I find is one of the most opening sequences ever. I feel this from my hips to my fingertips. And it feels like, oh man, in 10 minutes, I just essentially worked most of my body and opened it up. So I need to remind myself to do that more often. Let's come on to all fours. And let's take that little chest opener that we just did a little bit further into puppy dog. So you're gonna have your hips on top of your knees. And then <clears throat> you're gonna keep the hips there, walk the hands forward and drop the chest and the head down. Now they may or may not come to the floor. So you always have the option of propping yourself up with a block if you need to. If it's uncomfortable to hang out, in the air there. You can always bring a block. But if it's comfortable, I suggest just allowing everything to melt towards the floor. <clears throat> really taking yourself to your edge here. Letting the low back and the belly soften. <sighs> Thank <laughs> you. 
we're gonna do kind of like a little inchworm thing here. So this is all about spinal mobility. You're gonna tuck your tail and let that rounding action roll through the spine. And as it comes up towards the head, your shoulders and your forehead are gonna peel up. And then just like a wave crashing on the shore, you're gonna let the hips come forward. And crash into kind of, kind of a modified up dog, but I would call it more of a seal position from yin yoga, where the legs are relaxed, however distance apart they happen to be. Your hands are out in front of you, and your heart is looking forwards. And then you're going to round the spine again from the head and let that bring your elbows down to the floor. And as the elbows touch the floor, let the rounding move through the mid and low back so that you peel yourself up and back into puppy dog on a hot up pose again. We'll take one full breath here. And then as we slowly inhale, we slowly roll through. And when we start our exhale, we drop down into seal again. We hold for a full round of breath. On the inhale, we start the rounding again. Elbows touch down. We exhale, peel the hips up and back into Anahata. Where we hold for our full breath. And our inhale begins the rounding again. And we exhale down into seal. Holding for a full round of breath. And then our inhale again, we begin the round. Exhale takes us back. Hold for an in breath and out breath. And our inhale moves us again. Our exhale melts us again. And hold for a breath. And our inhale moves us. Hold for a breath. And the inhale moves us. Exhale into seal. And let's hold here in seal for a moment. So seal pose in yin yoga is associated with kidney meridian. It's associated with multiple meridians, but kidney is one of the main ones. And kidney holds all of our fear. And the world 
can be a fearful place these days if we allow it to be. We take that on. So back bends are fabulous for helping us work through that emotion. Let's come down onto our forearms. Ooh. And you're going to turn your left hand in towards your right inner elbow. Bend your right knee. Take your right arm back and try to grab from the inside of the foot. Things to watch for here would be the knee popping out. You wanna make sure that you maintain the knee in alignment with the hip here. And you're gonna to start to pull this right heel toward your glute. So as you do this, your elbow's gonna point up towards the sky. And then you wanna think about rotating that right rib cage and shoulder forwards. Push your right hip and femur bone down into the mat. And you can take a second here and kind of windshield wiper the foot so I kind of pull it out and push it in. And I'm just very gentle and playing with what feels good because you're going to find different areas where you're like, oh, I really need the stretch there. And this is super, super gentle, guys. We're not cranking on this knee. I have a torn meniscus right now and I'm doing this. So definitely you're being gentle. So for me, it's a strong internal rotation that feels really good. For you, it might be an external rotation or right down the middle. You know, gently release that foot, bring the right hand back, and then you're going to externally rotate, so drop the toes over towards that left knee, and then pull the knee up. <clears throat> I like to call this um, sleeping baby pose because you'll see kids a lot of times take this pose and it's really calming for your central nervous system. So you can stay upright here. Sometimes I find that I really enjoy being upright because I get more um, stretch through my groin. You can also drop yourself flat down into a full sleeping baby pose. And if you're ever feeling like your mind is running at night, you're having a hard time sleeping, I highly suggest just taking a moment in this pose. I had to actually cut this from my morning um, yoga routine because I kept falling asleep. And then you're going to lengthen that right leg back. And then back into Sphinx pose. And then you're going to take the right hand, cross it towards the left elbow, bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand. Again, make sure that the knee is in alignment with the hip and not splayed out to the left. And you're going to start to pull that foot in towards your hip. Elbow's going to point up towards the sky. Shoulders will draw away from the ears. And then you're going to think about pressing your left rib cage and shoulder forwards.
And then you can start to just gently windshield wiper the legs, sending the toes out, sending the toes in, just finding out where you feel the best stretch. Stay connected to your breath. And you release the foot, bring the hand back, slide that knee out to the left. Again, you can stay upright if that feels good. You can drop down. This is such a glorious release for the pelvis and the back. I'm going to bring the leg back. Give me a second here in Sphinx pose. Wiggle your hips out. And then take the hands under the shoulders. Roll yourself up and back. Child's pose. Coming up on all fours, tuck your toes, lift your knees to hover just gently above the mat, belly button drawing in towards the low back. And then slide up and back, downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet, hanging into a forward fold here. And from our forward fold, you're gonna bend your right knee. I'm actually gonna rotate to face you so that you can kind of see this a little bit better. <clears throat> So forward fold, right knee bends. And I see that my whole pelvis kind of shifts here. You'll feel this more deeply in your left hip, glute and low back probably. Maybe even down the side of the leg. Right elbow is gonna to come to the inside of the right knee. Left hand is gonna come onto your sacrum. 
rotate your torso to look to the left. So you're trying to kind of square your chest to the left side of the room. Let your head hang here. You want to take this into a little bit more of an activated pose. You can place your right palm on the floor right and under your face and take the left arm straight up towards the sky. And you're using that right hand to continue to rotate you around. Continue to let the head hang though. Sweeping the left arm down. Relax with that right leg it's still bent. And then straighten out the leg. Then the left knee, hang out. Let that stretch come into the right side of the pelvis, the right hip, down the right leg. And then taking the left elbow into the left knee, right hand onto the sacrum, rotate to the right, opening the chest towards the right side of the room. Relax your head. If you want to take this a little bit more deep, left hand onto the mat under the head, right arm up towards the sky, push into that left hand, feel that kind of wave move right from the left hand up to the right as you spiral open a little bit more, let the head hang, it doesn't need to do anything. Bringing the right arm back down, hang out for a second. Keep that left knee bent. And then go ahead and lengthen the left leg out so you're resting into a forward fold. Bend your knees, roll up. Oh. And then you're actually going to turn yourself so that you're oriented on your mat the way I am, side to side. And we're going to take this into a straddle stance. Hands come down onto the mat. Oh. I like to just do a little wiggle here because how often do we get to scissor our pelvis like this? It just feels so freaking good. Just kind of rocking the pelvis, moving into those inner thighs. All right, so this one is a little bit of a brain tease. You're going to walk your hands to your right leg, both hands. They may or may not grab the foot. So it's fine. You want to grab hold of whatever you can grab a hold of with both hands. Ideally, your left hand is going to go to the outside. So whether it's the outside of the calf, the ankle, the foot, whatever it is, you just want that good grip. So we're really pulling ourselves over into a twist here. Now, this is the part where your brain is going to be like, Sahara, what the hell are you talking about? Your left hand has a good grip on your right foot. So identify your left and your right. 
right foot, left hand, left knee, the one you're not touching, is going to bend. I know, everybody just bent their right knee. <laughs> bend your left knee, the one you're not touching. So you're pulling yourself super long over your right leg. And then so your left knee is like, hey man, let's do a little tug of war here. So that left knee bends, pulling the pelvis away from the foot, trying to drag your torso away from the right foot. And your hand is hanging on for dear life, pulling your chest towards your right foot. So tug of war. Straightening that left leg. Woo. Walk it back center. Rest for a second in a forward fold here. You're going to walk yourself over to your left foot. Both hands reaching for that left leg wherever you grab hold, ideally right hand outside of the knee, calf, ankle, foot, whatever you got, grab hold and lengthen <coughs> your chest towards your left foot. Nice and long, head's hanging out. And then as you pull yourself towards your left foot, your right knee is going to bend. Tug of war. Left leg is nice and long. Right knee is bending. Waistline is just getting longer and longer and longer in this little game of tug of war here. Straighten out the right leg. Walk yourself back center. Take a moment, forward fold. And then you're just gonna scoot your feet to the, the far side of your mat. Bend your knees and bring them down onto the mat. So you're like in a wide-legged four-leg stance. Relax the top to your feet over. You're gonna walk those knees out, flex your feet. Now, ideally, we're looking to have the heels directly behind the knees or very slightly wider, okay? But not here, okay? So not hidden behind your butt. Knee, heels are right behind the knees or slightly wider. You're gonna come down on your forearms and then push your hips back. Sit your hips back as far as they'll go. If they go super far, you need to take your knees wider. In theory, your hips should only go back a couple inches. And then come up onto your hands, tip your weight forwards, bring those feet in. So now we're in a super wide knee child's pose. Send the hips back and come down into that wide knee child's pose. Mm.
rolling up. Bring the knees slowly together. Just sit up for a second, relax the shoulders down. You wanna grab your blocks. <clears throat> We're gonna turn back lengthwise on the mat. We're gonna do some movement with our breath again. <clears throat> and then we're gonna move towards some splits. So I like that the blocks as support. You are going to come into a lunge, so right foot forward. And just take a second to really get yourself square. So feel a strong internal rotation of that left leg. Feel the femur bone sinking down and forwards. Lift your pubic bone, drop your tail. You feel nice and long through the low back, through your waistline. And you're going to peel the hips up and back and bow down over top of the leg. Now, as you come into this position, so when we were in the lunge, we were looking at internal rotation in the left leg. Now that we're in the forward fold, I want you to think of external rotation in the right femur, okay? So you can even grab your hand back. Let me turn around so you get a better view of this. <clears throat> you can grab hold of the tissue at the top of that right thigh and actually rotate it out. And I'm not turning my foot out, that's not what's happening. I'm just assisting the femur. So I'm still pushing through the ball of my big toe, but I'm assisting the femur and actually rotating and that's gonna open up the hip more and then push it back. So you deepen the crease up here in the hip, okay? So when we are in the forward fold, we're focusing on external rotation. When we are in the lunge, we are focusing on internal rotation. Make sense? And we're looking for length everywhere. So we're gonna roll ourselves back forwards. And we're gonna come nice and strong into that internal rotation in the left leg, lengthening everything. This is why I like the blocks. I can get right next to my hips and really give myself a little height. So we inhale here, we exhale, and then as we inhale, it's as if a wave is starting from our butt, and it starts to pull us back, and then we exhale and surrender over top of that right leg, we have that external rotation, and then we hold for a full round of breath. And then the next inhale comes from our right knee and starts to pull us forward. We exhale down into the lunge. And we hold for a breath. We inhale from the hips. Exhale, bowing down. Hold for breath. We inhale from the knee. Exhale, sinking. Hold for a breath. One more time. We inhale from the hips. Exhale, bowing. Hold 
Hold for a breath. And then inhale from the knee. And exhale, sink. Hold for a breath. Optional here is to start to walk that right foot forward. Now, the main thing you're watching for as you start to move that right foot forward is that the pelvis doesn't move, change, or shift. Okay, so I don't start scissoring the pelvis back and forth. I don't start tipping my weight side to side. I only extend as far as I can without losing my pelvic stability, okay? Keep driving your left hip and your left femur forwards. That is the initiator of the pose. So oftentimes when we come into our splits, you think that front leg as being the initiator and it's not. It's actually our break. It's what pulls us back. So I'm pulling my right hip back even as I come forward into a split and I'm pushing my left femur forwards. And then you can push into your hands to pull that right foot back. Oh. And let's take a down dog for a moment. Oh. Knees down, left foot forward. We start off in our lunge. So now we've got a strong internal rotation happening through this right thigh, right femur. And I'm pressing my right femur and hip bone forwards, pulling my left hip back. So very similar to the Split. <clears throat> my low back lengthens. My lower abdomen is engaged. So I'm pulling all of those internal organs gently back towards my sacrum. Shoulders are relaxed. And then just move back into forward fold. So again, you can take the hand on the top of the thigh, externally rotate it and pull it backwards. As you root through the ball of the foot, so there's a little bit of a diagonal action happening here. So my shin essentially stays perfectly parallel and then I'm externally rotating through that femur bone. So just taking a moment to feel that in the body. Finding length. And we'll move with our breath. So come back forwards into a lunge, driving that right femur forwards. Internally rotating. Take a full breath here. And then from the hips, inhale, let the butt pull you back. Externally rotate and exhale, folding forward. Hold for an inhale. And then the left knee pulls us forward on the inhale. And we soften and sink through that exhale. 
Hold for a breath. Inhale, butt pulls us back. Exhale, fold. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, right knee pulls us forward. Exhale, we sink. Hold for a breath. Inhale, booty takes us back. Exhale, bowing. Hold. Inhale, left knee takes us forward. Exhale, we sink. One more, hold for an in-breath. Inhale, booty back. Exhale, bow. Hold for the breath. And now knee brings us forward. Exhale, we sink down. Hold for a breath. Men. Optional, walking that foot forwards, making sure we don't give up. And pelvis in the meantime. I'm driving that right femur forward and I'm sucking the left femur back. Bringing that knee in. Let's make our way to down dog again. Last down dog, so we'll just take a second to move through it. If there's something your body is calling out for, go ahead and honor that. And once you finish, Moving through everything, you make your way towards Shavasana. Yeah. 
in whatever manner feels appropriate for you. Once you get there, taking a couple of deep rounds of breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Begin to deepen your breath once again. Feeling your fingers and toes, arms and legs. Reaching your arms up past your head. Reach through the heels of the hands and the heels of the feet. Stretching along. Letting <sighs> one knee and then the other. Pulling the knees into your chest for a hug. <sighs> Your little rock side to side. And you can either roll over onto your side here, slowly bring yourself up to seated, or you can start to rock and roll the whole length of your spine. Eventually rocking yourself all the way up to seated. Mm. Closing your eyes, taking some more intentional breaths here in your hands, one on top of the other, on top of the heart center. And try to feel this whole sternum 
staying relatively stable, but everything else expanding on that in-breath. Back, low back, side bodies, belly, armpits, collarbones, everything widens out, but keep this pressing down. And the corners of your lips turn up slightly. Give me a moment of gratitude. And offering up your practice to someone or something. I offer mine to my dear friend, Mona, who left us this last week. May all beings be happy and be free. Namaste.